I can tell you that uh, week eight plan, I think I'm repeating myself here once again, but um, week eight plan is essentially that Wednesday, we have a Q&A session. You can ask in Korean. I'm going to clarify it in Korean. You don't have to attend. I, I will mark everyone as attending. So you can come. You choose not to come. Do your own work if you want to. But when you have issues that you want to clarify, that's the time to do it. And then um, office hour-wise, it's Wednesday 1 to 2. No one's used up yet. Um, I'm expecting that week 7 and week 8 of office hour will be definitely used up by people trying to... Uh, in Korean expression for that is 벼락치기. It's like um, doing it at the last minute. It's like lightning revision, basically. So um, uh, I'm expecting that, so don't feel bad about it. That's, that's part, fact of life. It's not as if I was the one that was always doing the work on time. I know I've been through my student life, so use that office hour if you want to. Um, I'm sure you have questions of your own. So. Right. Um, oh, always good to double check. 정민수 학생 그 사이 아니 정민수 학생이 저기 이하진 학생 그 사이에 안 왔나요? And Rafael, we have missed. Okay. Right. Now, last week we already had a look at how a price change leads to a change in a consumer's optimal demand. 가격이 변하면 사람들의 최적 선택에 따른 것들도 다 변하죠. But that led to weird stuff like Giffen Good. I mean, it doesn't really make sense. Why would you ever decrease demand of a good because its price has gone down? Um, clearly, something must be going on here. And I said, we're going to look at what's going on here today in terms of Slutsky equation. Now, this is going to be a difficult lecture, but I'm going to recap what we have learned on Friday first. I said, distinguish between substitution effect or in Korean, it's called 대체 효과. 효과가 맞죠, 원래는. 그죠? And then, Income effect, 소득효과라고 합시다, 그러면. Um, now, um, quite a few of you are unfamiliar with English textbooks. I'm expecting that you are learning through other textbooks on microeconomics, 뭐, 이준규 교수님이 시영재학이라든지 아니면 뭐, 김영상 교수님 거라든지 몇개 있어요. So I'm expecting that that's not bad, that's good, but there are two ways of going about this Slutsky equation. So I'm going to tell you what's going on, what's different um, today. Uh, first of all, does anyone remember what we meant by substitution effect following a price change? Now, that leads to the consumer's change in behavior. So in other words, for every hour that you don't work and play Low or watch Game of Thrones instead or whatever, you're missing out on something bigger. It's like this, same as well. So suppose that you can go for a Chinese or you can go for, I don't know, Western. Um, or in Korean case, the popular chefs at the moment are Yeon Book Chef, Chinese wise. Um, so the Korean variety shows at the moment, entertainment shows are skewed towards cooking. Don't know why, but it's a case. Um, so suppose that you can go to Mongnan and have great Dongpayuk there, Chinese dish, or you can go to, I don't know, Transit Chef's Elbon and have a course menu there, which is actually very nice. Um, suppose that because Transit Chef has become so popular, he raises his price. Okay? then um, clearly you have to think about at your current rate of consumption, you must be thinking about, hang on, if I don't go to Elbon, if I go to Mongnan instead, I can go more. I can do a lot more. That's substitution effect. The rate at which you can substitute one good to another changes. Um, 
Another example is, should we get drunk on wine or should we get drunk on beer? If the price of wine goes up, then clearly you might be thinking, hang on, why, why, why should we even have wine? We can, we can just go for beer instead and we can have a lot more. Secondly, there's income effects. Anyone want to have a go um, in Korean or in English what this income effect entails? I think you've got the right idea, but let me express that slightly more, um, clarify that a little further in English, okay? Um, so, to sustain your current consumption bundle, because of a price change, it might be more expensive to do so, or it might be cheaper to do so. For example, if the, I, I said, student meals at Hanuri suddenly goes 1,001. That, you know, like, what's it like now? It's about 2,500, 2,800, 2,000, 2,800, Suddenly, apparently, suppose the hakshik um, goes by half the student meals. Then, you having seven student meals and seven nights out, <laughs> not sure whether you would want seven nights out in a week, but suppose you do, will be cheaper than before. It gives you a certain amount of extra money you can spend somewhere else. Yeah? You eating seven meals a day at Hanuri now suddenly frees you up. Uh, 10,500 won. Yeah? That money can be used to buy more of student meals or you can spend extra money, extra shots of tequila, extra shots of Jäger or whatever. Yeah? So it's this, really. At your current rate of consumption, your rate of substitution changes. But because of price change at your current late rate of consumption, you might be able to do more, do great things, a lot more. Or you might not be able to do so much. You might, you know, in case of a price rise, you have to save up from somewhere. So that's what we mean by the pivot shift. At the previous budget constraint, you pivot around your current, your, your in the original consumption bundle to equate to the new rate of substitution. That singles out the effect of substitution. What's the rate of change of goods like at you, why you're consuming at the moment? How many more hakshiks do you have to give up to go up to a night out somewhere? Or, and then you shift out to meet the new budget constraint. So in the case of a price fall, it will be outward shift. It's like you have extra income. You've suddenly saved up some money in your wallet buying your initial original consumption. Because the price has gone down, you're saving up some money. Oh, actually, I've got some money left. About, you know, I mean... Because hakshik, the student meal is now a lot cheaper. Hey, I have got some extra money to spend. It's like having extra income. So for a price rise, it will be the opposite way around. Do you see this, right? Like, to sustain your initial consumption bundle, you'll have to spend more because the price of one good has risen. That's natural, yeah? You know, I mean, uh, suppose that price of soju has gone up from 2,501 to 3,001, or in case 4,001 nowadays, gone up a lot. Then that means if you want to have samgyeopsal, or the, the pork, the thingy, um, and soju on, a, on your night out with your friends, and you eat as before and drink as before, it costs you more. It's like a reduction in income. Yeah? We see this. So you're clear, I hope, on the substitution effect end of things and income effect of things. So that's what I've written down here. Um, to think about the substitution income effect, break down the relative price decrease of good one into it, pivot the budget line around the original consumption bundle, then shift. Now, the problem is, there are two ways of going about substitution effect. 
I'm going to teach you something called Slutsky Marshallian way, which is pivot here, then shift. Okay? But there is another way of doing the substitution effect called um, Hicksian way of doing it. Some textbooks do that. Particular, most importantly, that Korean textbook that you use a lot does it that way. What it does differently is you don't pivot the first part of substitution. You don't pivot around the original consumption bundle. Original consumption bundle에서 요거를 회전시키는 게 아니고요. You, what you do instead there is leave the original consumption bundle as before and indifference curve as before and choose the budget constraint slope to be the same as the new one. Okay? But make sure that it is tangential to your original level of indifference curve. In Korean, 어차피 이걸로 공부하실 분들은 한국말로 공부하실 테니까 한국말로 하면 원래 소비하는 지점에서 회전을 시키는 게 아니고요. 그런 교과서들에서 뭘 다르게 하냐면 가격 바뀌기 전 슬로프와 가격 바뀐 후 슬로프가 둘다 오리지널 인디퍼런스 커브에 탄젠셜하도록 요 well of as before, then do that. So the, the way to do it there, and it's confusing you more than it needs to be. So if you're revising using Varian, forget about what I'm saying now. But the Korean textbooks that people are revising a lot on has this issue, so I have to clarify this. 그 경우에는 인디퍼런스 커브를 그대로 두고 내 새로운 그 가격 교환 비율 하에서 그 인디퍼런스 커브에 가려면 어디가 탄젠셜이냐 어디 그런 식으로 갑니다. Absolutely no difference in the final analysis whatsoever. 실제로 달라지는 게 없어요. 문제가. It's just a substitution effect will always turn out to be one way. Income effect will always turn out to be the other. So um, it's going to give you the same thing, but you have to be aware of these differences. If you revise on that, if you do it like that in the exam, I'm not going to mark you down because there's no right way or wrong way of doing it. But I would prefer if you revise it the English textbook way. Okay? I only say this because Anchang Yuak Singh and a few others asked this a number of times, what should I revise based on? So, okay. We've clarified that. So the pivot essentially represents a change in the market rate of substitution while holding the consumer's purchasing power constant. What do we mean by this? Substitution effect represents a rate change between two goods. So think of the samgyeopsal, the pork belly, and the soju example. That's the most classic thing you have when you go out in the night out with your, with your mates from primary school or something like that. A couple of, you do, and there's a great debate over when you should turn the meat over, or you shouldn't, or whatever. There's a, in fact, I had a massive argument once with a friend of mine over when you should turn the meat. 뒤집어 말어 뒤집어 말어 이런 게 실제로 멱살 잡고 싸우게 됩니다. 실제로 보면. Uh, and then soju as well, right? Now, what you have done in substitution effect wise, notice something different. What does this budget constraint here represent a particular income level? 그거에 대응하는 소득 수준이 있겠죠. 그죠? 그 버즈 라인에 대응하는. 여기까지는 이해되시죠? What does that income level represent? That income level is designed. 참 이거 계량 경제학부터 계속 쓰는 단어지만, 
it is designed, deliberately designed, so that your original consumption is just affordable. In other words, it's on the line at the new rate of substitution. So suppose samgyeopsal was, the pork belly was 6,000 won per 150 gram. Soju was 3,000 won. Okay? So you, 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 you can buy two bottles of soju for one person's worth of samgyeopsal, irinbun. Yep. Suddenly, there's a, suppose that um, the government imposes a massive tax on soju. Suppose the price doubles. Yeah? Then for every bottle of soju you drink, you're now giving up the entire 150 gram of samgyeopsal, pork belly. Whereas you only needed to give up 75 gram before. The rate changed, right? Or in a case of a price fall, suppose, that suppose that um, government repeals all taxes on alcohol, which would be great to innovate. And then uh, price of social goes down to 2001, okay? So the rate of substitution before was one person's worth of samgyeopsal to two bottles of soju. Now it's one person's worth to three bottles of soju. Yep. Suppose me and my mate um, went out, usually go out, we usually go out, we have about a bottle each. Two bottles, and then we'll probably have about three person's worth, like 450 grams. Sounds about, you know, you, your usual night out with someone, yeah? So that's what? Two bottles of soju, 3,001 each, so 6,001. And then, 3,000원이니까, 6,000원 곱하기 3,000원. 18,001 for the pork. So add them together and you get 24,001 before the change in soju's price, before the government repealed tax on soju. Okay? What this new budget line represents is how much income should I give you to make your original consumption affordable at the new rate of substitution? In other words, so I, I'm still having two bottles of soju and three, three persons worth of samgyeopsal with me and my mate. But now it only costs what? 18,000 won for pork, that's still the same, but what? Soju price has gone down to 2,000 won on each. So together, 4,000 won plus 18,000 is what? 4 plus 18 is 22,000. So if I were to only get, if, suppose that I don't, but suppose if my, pay, if my family arrangements were like that, in just as with most Korean family, that I give away all my income to my wife, she does all the books, and then I get money from her in form of the great Korean word, yongdon. In that sort of system, I uh, suppose, you know, this is sort of conversation with me and my wife. Um, you know, are you going to see that friend of yours, that, that, that elementary school friend of yours tonight? Yeah, I'm probably going to have a bottle of soju each, and we're probably going to cook, you know, um, grow some pork and be done with that. Okay? My wife says, okay, you can, you needed 24,000 won to afford that. But hey, price of social has gone down. I'm only going to give you 22,000 won. That's the substitution effect. That's what this new budget line represents. It's how much money should my wife give in the form of yongdon to make my original consumption bundle as affordable as before. Yeah? But the thing is, notice how it's no longer, your original consumption bundle is no longer your utility maximizing. It's not tangential to your new 
indifference curve. Good job. What this implies is I can go somewhere else and get greater utility from it. Probably because soju is cheaper and pork is relatively more expensive, what am I going to do? What would you do, Anchang Yasu, if you're in my situation? So, okay, so basically the answer is I'm going to get wasted, wasted. Basically, I'm going to buy, I don't know, soju is cheap. I'm going to buy two more extra bottles or whatever, and I'm only going to consume two, 300 grams of meat rather than 450. Yeah? That's the substitution effect. Okay? So that's what we mean by consumer's purchasing power const constant. Your original consumption is just as affordable under the new price set, new price regime as before. Is everyone clear on what's happening with substitution effect? Any question? Either in Korean or in English? No? Then, in the second step, it's as if my wife hasn't noticed the price change in soju. She doesn't know, so she gives me whatever the money that was before, 24,000 won. My original bundle only cost 22,000 won. That samimbun, samgyeopsal, samimbun, three persons worth of meat and two bottles of soju. I could have done that with 22,000 won, but my wife doesn't know. My wife doesn't know the soju price has fallen. So she gives me 24,000 won, just as before. What does this represent? I can do more. I can buy extra bottle of soju. I can do more. My purchasing power has increased. That is what we mean by income effect. Keep the purchasing power constant in the first step. Then account for the fact that purchasing power has changed in the second step. That's, that pivot shift is therefore philosophical. How much money should I give you to make your original bundle const, you know, affordable? Then how much money do you actually have? That's the shift. Substitution, income. Substitution, income. Now, time for basic maths. Okay. Suppose, <clears throat> here's the important part. Suppose we want to keep the old consumption bundle just affordable under the new prices. Remember what I did with soju and samgyeopsal earlier, right? Then, we must adjust the monetary income to be able to do this. What did I do earlier? How much money do I need? How much money do I get? Do I need to grab it out of my wife's purse to be able to go for 450 grams of pork and two bottles of soju? 22,000 won, right? It's no longer 24,000 won, is it? Because the price of soju has fallen. 1,000 won per bottle of so it's cheaper now. So I need less money to be able to consume my old bundle. Let's call this income M dash. What that means is your original bundle X1, X2 must be exactly affordable at both P1, P2, M. That was where 6,000, sorry, 3,001 per soju. 6,000 won per samgyeopsal, 20, 24,000 won. So that was two bottles of soju, three. 인분이라는 거참 표현하기가 힘드네. Three portions. Ah, that would do. Three portions of samgyeopsal. Okay. Price has changed. Now soju is 2,000 won. Price of price per portion of samgyeopsal still 6,000. So, if I want to consume two bottles of soju and three portions of samgyeopsal, how much money do I need? Exactly M dash. So, P1 X1 plus P2 X2 should be equal to M. P1 dash, but your original consumption of soju, P2 plus your original consumption of samgyeopsal, must be just affordable, exactly affordable. You, you, you have no money. I can't get a taxi. Nothing. Nothing left over. I have to use my T-Money card at your M dash 22,000 won. 이해되시죠? 이거는 
최대한 천천히 가려고 합니다. So if you take the difference between the two, that drops out. That minus that is what? That minus that times x1. Just like this. Soju is 1,000 won cheaper per bottle. I consume two more, two bottles of soju whenever I go out on a night out. So even if you give me 2,000 won less, I can still afford my original consumption. Melissa, is it clear to you now? Yeah? Good. So price and income moves in the same direction. If a price of a good goes up, your adjusted income must go up. Your price goes down, then you only need fewer, mo not fewer, less money than before, and you can still keep the old consumption. Clear? So abstract but basic example. Suppose that a consumer or suppose that O Jisu Orini, i.e. my daughter, consumes 20 candy bars a week, which I'm trying not to do too hard, which costs 50 cents per bar. If the price of candy bars goes up by 10 cents, how much extra income must O Jisu Orini have to make the old consumption, i.e. 20 candy bars a week, which would be a disaster, affordable? Answer, $2. You consume 20 candy bars a week. Each of them goes up by 10 cents. So if you want to consume 20 candy bars just as much as before, how much extra money do you need? $2. Now, <coughs> the key is, while X1, X2 is still affordable, it is not likely to be an optimal point anymore. Because good one is relatively cheaper, the consumer is likely to substitute some good to consume more of good one. I said, what did I say earlier? Because soju is cheaper, hey, I can get wasted. You know, I can get absolutely hammered. Yeah? That's the mentality here. Because soju is cheaper, you will definitely consume more of it. You will increase your consumption of X1, decrease your consumption of pork. Jet you know, when, when you enter into the age of grand 3.0 and beyond in your 30s, that's not a wise thing to do. You know, drinking lots of bottles of soju with little um, pork or little anzu is a recipe for absolute disaster morning after. Massive mistake. But that's what we do. <laughs> that night, at least, that will allow me to attain higher utility. And then... I'm going to be singing down the streets of Majangdong, whatever, and then going to be like, way. Yep. So that's here. Substitution effect is exactly this. Because your original consumption bundle is suboptimal, no longer the optimal point, what do you do? Consume somewhere else. Consume the new point of optimality. 최진 학생, 안창규 학생, you're following me on this, right? Hopefully. Yep. Good. So, I haven't talked anything about income effect. I've only said substitution effect, and that's it for now. So, the precise definition of substitution effect or how much I consume, I say this is a substitution effect is what my optimal consumption was at my original point and at my new price and new adjusted income. That's your new optimal point. That was your original optimal point. That's your new optimal point. This X1S represents how much you consume extra as a result of substitution effect. I haven't said anything about income effect. Only purely substitution effect alone. Okay? So it's this. The change in the demand of good one can be small, can be large, can be very small, very large. I don't care. One thing, however, it must satisfy 
is that the demand of good one must move in the opposite direction to price movement. 가격이 변하는 방향에 반대 방향으로 비싸지면 덜 사야 된다는 거. This is because the rate of substitution itself is more. It has changed. For every hour of load that I play online, I'm missing out on a greater income that I can by working part time. That was my reasoning last week. Um, this effect is sometimes called a change in compensated demand, but that doesn't matter. So um, just stick with the word substitution effect for the remainder. Okay? But pivoting is not the end of the story. Adjusted monetary income is an abstract measure. My wife doesn't know if social price has gone down. She still gives me 24,000 won. So where's my optimal point? Optimal choice from no income change and only price change into two parts. Purchasing power constant, substitution effect, then take this as the starting point, then move to our new budget constraint. So that's the income effect. But here's the important part. Income effect can work either way. Remember, there were normal goods. Suppose, I think I used Handegon as an example, yeah, or someone else, I think. Um, if you were to go out on a sweating with Soryeon, you're not going to take Subway. You're going to go on Cacao Black if, you give, if I give you enough money. Cacao Black, Black, by the way, is a sort of a premium taxi service where you get served by E Class, Merc, Merc, and BMW 5 Series. Instead, and it's a lot more expensive. I've used it only once, but it's actually damn good service. It's, it's a good way of getting back from Gangnam, uh, Gangnam area at 11.30 on Friday night, if you are to ever caught up in that situation. About three times the usual amount, but hey, whatever. Yeah. So let's look at the graph now. In addition to the substitution effect, we must now consider the income effect as well. Yeah? And that income effect can be positive or negative, depending on whether the good is a normal good, 정상제냐, or inferior good, 열등제냐에 따라. So in this case, it is positive. Your demand for X goes up as income goes up. It's like cacao taxi. Need to get to there faster and see Kim Sa Hyun in real person. Yeah? That's what we mean by normal good. So here, substitution effect and normal good reinforce each other. You can have inferior good as well. Where X1S goes up because of substitution effect, but because the good is inferior, you go opposite way. The income effect and substitution effect clash against each other. Really, really badly clash. So the total change in demand, if you like, following a price change can be given as the sum of two effects. Nothing difficult about that. Now, if you write it out entirely, uh, it's like this. So, if I were to write out fully, this is the total change in X1 I want. But, I can break it down into the substitution component. Substitution is a income This relationship is called the Slutsky identity. It's not the Slutsky equation you're going to learn today, later on. Okay? It's named after, a, not surprisingly, a Russian economist who did quite a bit of work on this area. Okay? Well, early 20th century-ish. 
Now, for normal goods, it's easy. Substitution effect is positive after price decrease because it moves in the opposite direction to price change. Normal good effect is positive. So the entire thing will be positive for sure. Problem is with what? Inferior good. One is positive, but one's negative. What do we have? We can have a non Giffen inferior good. Substitution effect dominates income effect, so it goes up by a lot, goes down by a little, but what's the overall effect? Positive or negative? Positive. Yeah? Positive minus negative, but positive. This is a usual case you will see with just about inferior goods, like public transport or yontan, coal, or something like that will be exactly in this scenario. Problem is, now we get the answer for the Giffen good. What the hell is going on with Giffen good? This. Substitution effect is positive, but income effect is negative, and by a lot. Income effect is so strong that it overtakes, counterbalances the effect of substitution effect. That's what's going on. That's the reason why, can, why we can have a gift and good. And that's why I said Chanel, Bottega Veneta, whatever, uh, Colombo bags, or, or in the case, actually, let's be gender neutral. For the case of men, uh, watches, for example, say Patek Philippe or something like that, they are not gift and good. The price goes up and sometimes the demand goes up because people see it as a status symbol, yes. But it's not an inferior good. Patek Philippe being an inferior good is probably the most unlikely scenario that I will ever encounter. Or, I don't know, Lamborghini, um, I'm sorry. Aventador or something like that. Um, that being an inferior good, highly unlikely scenario. So th that's something else. That's not a Giffen good. Um, Aston Martin V12, Vanquish, whatever. That's not a Giffen good. A Giffen good is so, so, so bad in quality and nature that you're trying to get out as much as possible as soon as your income increases. You hate it that much. It's sort of a something you needed for survival, yeah? Like, I don't know, I, that's the reason why it's so difficult to find in real life situations, okay? So gift and good, if it exists at all, I'm not, I'm not gonna speculate on whether it can exist, whether it cannot exist, that's a different issue. That's an issue I am not willing to talk about, but if it does exist, it must be what? An inferior good, and a very, very inferior. Let's go back to the Slutsky identity. The change in X1, that the optimal demand, was broken down into two parts. Substitution effect and income effect. Now, um, for, to be sure, to be, um, just for convenience, I'm going to define X1M as the negative of the income effect. So it's the opposite side of the income effect. It will be helpful in a minute why I do this, okay? Then this becomes essentially this, right? substitution effect minus minus of the income effect, okay? There's a reason why I'm doing this. Um, then, ta-da! You can have something like this. Divide everything by delta P1. Then you get a rate of change, or if you like, the slope of the demand curve, yeah? P1이 x에 있고 m이 y이니까 x가 y에 있는, 
inverse of the demand curve, really, I guess. So you get a rate of change. How much, so if the price falls by 1,001, how much will the demand go up by? That's the rate of change, the ratio. But there's a reason why I left it here. Remember this. So if you throw this into here, you get a relationship like this. Second term of the right-hand side gives. Um, it's just like that. That is what I want to focus on for the rest of the lecture, and that's going to be me done after the lecture in this. This, everyone, is called the Slutsky equation. How do we interpret each term? Now, the first term on the left-hand side is what? Anyone willing to have a go? If the price goes up by 1-1, one, 1-1, one, 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 <laughs> one, one, <laughs> <it won. laughs> then how many units of soju, or how many bottles of soju will the demand fall by? That's our main interest. That's the total effect. How much does a change in price per one, in terms of a one, a price increase of one one, or it one, change the demand of soju? Yeah? And then we break it down into two things. First term on the right hand side is, not surprisingly, the substitution effect in exists. Okay? In other words, how much does your demand for soju fall by if the price goes up but the consumer's purchasing power is constant? That's what we've been discussing all day, substitution effect. But income effect is the more interesting part. I have written down, I could have written down like this, just like that and move on. I didn't do that, okay? I didn't. Because X1N is given like this, what's X1M? It's a negative of this. So this minus that. In other words, So you throw it down there, then what do we get? How much does your income change? One, 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 one's increase of your income or decrease of your income change your demand for soju by how much you initially consume is also a part of the income effect so income effect can be broken down into two parts this how the demand changes as income changes good job times x1 how much you consume What's the intuition behind this? This represents the rate at which you will um, reduce or increase your consumption of soju following an income change. Yeah? If your income falls by one one or one or, or one more one, or whatever, increase by one more, decrease by one more, how much your demand will fall by? Yeah? But times X1, you're already consuming the original demand at X1. So this is essentially how much extra money you save up on, how much extra money you can spend and how much you're going to spend extra on X1 because of income effect. 
This last part is confusing, so I'm going to explain that in Korean for a second. 자, 여기 Slusky Equation 특징이 이전 슬라이드까지 되게 이해하기가 쉽습니다. 그런 다음에 여기서 다 놓쳐버려요. 이게 의미하는 바가 뭐냐 하면 1원의 인컴이 올라갔을 때 또는 떨어졌을 때 내가 디멘드를 얼마나 바꾸겠냐라는 거예요. 근데 우리가 중요한 건 1원이 아닙니다. 1원이. 왜요? 이미 내가 컨시움하고 있는 만큼 그 X1만큼이 중요한 거예요. 왜 저기 X1을 곱해주냐 하면 내가 1원이 더 생기면 X1에 더 투자를 할 텐데 이미 내가 학식 일곱 번 먹고 있음으로 인해서 학식의 가격이 내려가면 은한번 먹는 사람한테 학식이 내려간 거하고 학식 일곱 번 먹는 사람한테 학식 가격이 내려간 게 똑같은 인컴 효과를 줍니까? 소득 효과를? 아니죠. So in English like this. Suppose that the price of student meal goes down. It's not going to have the same effect on a person like me who, who would occasionally go to Nanuri and have student meal. And another person like, say, Handegon Aksen without prejudice, who eats seven times a week there. That represents different income change. The, how much you consume originally of X1 essentially allows you to determine how much income benefit you get following a pr price change. It's like this. Back to soju and pork example. A person like me who occasionally consumes a little bit of soju, I save up a bit if the soju price goes down. Someone who lives on soju, construction manual workers who have it half a bottle of soju every day over lunch, for them it represents huge amount of income change. Just a little fall in price of soju or not. I don't smoke. I don't care if my tambe price goes down or not, cigarette price goes down. Doesn't mean a thing to me. It doesn't represent any income saved up. Or if it, its price goes up, so be it, whatever. Full stop. I smoked about three cigarettes maximum in my entire life, twice or something like that. So, doesn't mean a thing to me. But if you're a chain smoker, finishing a pack a day, 하루에 한 갑판은 that pack of price going up by a thousand won because of government taxes represents a huge damaging income effect on you. That's the reason why we have this original demand of good one here on the income effect. Everyone clear on this now? That's the reason why you should go really carefully in interpreting the income effect. 괜히 시간에 쓴게 아닙니다. 이게 되게 중요해요. 요거 놓치면 so sometimes you call this part endowment effect or something like that. But um, that again confuses more than it helps. So let's not talk about that. Um, now, Slutsky equation gives rise to one important law regarding consumer demand. That's about normal good. If a demand for a good increases when its price, uh, sorry, income increases, 정상자의 경우죠, what can we conclude? Demand goes down when its price increases. For normal goods, we have this nice relationship where it responds positively to income and negatively to price. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, we just spent five weeks to learn that simple, I mean, it sounds, hey, income goes up. If you, if you, if you like that good so much, if, you, if its income goes up, then clearly your demand will go down if, you know, Sounds obvious to us, you know, at first glance. It's not. It's not obvious at all. 
not all goods are normal goods. Not all goods are normal goods. Yeah. Some goods are inferior goods. In other words, not everything that we consume are normal goods. They don't always positively respond to income. What does that mean? We can only be sure of a guaranteed negative sloping demand curve, we can only get a proper guarantee of a negatively sloping demand curve only for normal goods. For inferior goods, it can hold, it may not hold. Generally, it still holds, obviously. That's why we can't generalize and say demand slopes negative, demand slopes down. But the notion here is clear. The notion is important. That this downward sloping demand curve can only be guaranteed with certainty for the subset of goods that you respond positively after an income change, i.e. normal goods. So stuff like foreign travel, eating at a fine dining, wine, etc. The luxury stuff that you enjoy. The, the, I don't know, whatever the stuff that you consume positively after your income change. That gives rise to a downward sloping demand curve. But can you notice something important here? I said whether a good is normal or inferior depends on what? Each person's perception and also each person's income level. Yeah? A taxi might be a normal good for some. For some with extortionate amount of money in their pocket, taxi is an inferior good. You would only... I, I know of at least two people who, are, who have too much money for their own good and only, but only travel on cacao black. Or bobom taxi or stuff like that. So, a downward sloping demand curve for the market as a whole can only be guaranteed if enough population that participates in economic activity in that economy, in that market, perceive it to be normal good. <coughs> For each person, or good may be normal, or good may be inferior, or good may be normal, inferior, whatever. doesn't matter. But the, what that really matters is in addition, in aggregate, you aggregate each of your optimal demand and we end up, get, we end up with market demand. That market demand can be guaranteed to be downward sloping if enough of you perceive it to be a normal good. Then we can guarantee that the entire demand as a whole will also be downward sloping. If all of you, everyone in the population perceive a good to be normal good. I can't think of that many stuff really, but like the, the, at the top end of cars, apartment blocks like Galleria Fora here or something like that, everything that is normal good, then now we have derived, proved what we wanted to prove, what we went, went out to set out to prove weeks ago. Why do demand curves slope downward? We have an answer to that. Because of this Slutsky relationship because enough people perceive it to be a normal good. 